China, the nation that once seemed to dominate the tech world, is now struggling with a severe weakness, its inability to produce high-end semiconductors. Despite its rapid rise in other sectors, China's tech limitations are becoming a strategic liability. The world is shifting its gaze as China faces a technological crisis, unable to fully control the tools it desperately needs. What happens when a superpower's ambitions collide with the harsh reality of technological dependency? We will now move and listen to Peter Zihan's insights as he breaks down China's struggle into three categories. What they can do on their own, what they can achieve with external help, and what they can't do at all. Key thing to remember about technology in China is that there's kind of two categories. There's the ones, the things that they can do all by themselves without any sort of help from anyone else. Uh, in terms of chips, that's 90 nanometer and worse. So basically internet of things quality. And then the second category is what they can do when they have external technology that they can apply. Uh, and then the third category, I guess you want to get even more aggressive here, are the things that they can't do at all, but they really, really want to. So the high-end chips definitely fall into that category. They can make chips up to roughly 28, 26 nanometers with a hefty amount of external help, not just for the lithography, but especially for the quality checks on the wafers. So when you make a, a semiconductor, for example, you've got this giant Volkswagen sized crystal of silicon, you slice off a disc of it, and then that is what you etch and dope and bake. You have to do that somewhere between 30 and 90 times based on the quality. And the quality checks on those discs, that's not done by Chinese workers. That's done almost exclusively by foreign workers. So that's the weak point there. Transitioning from China's semiconductor limitations, the government has responded by tapping into its vast reserves of subsidies and a fervent sense of nationalism. In the face of foreign restrictions, they've managed to push forward technologically, though not without significant compromises. Let's take a closer look at how this strategy played out in one notable case. But if you throw in bottomless subsidization, which they have, and a hefty dollop of nationalism, which they're not shy about using, you can get the Chinese population to purchase products that the government basically points about. And the Huawei situation falls into that category. So what they did was they took an older technology called deep ultraviolet, and they used it to adapt a pre-existing chip design, because they can't do that part even for the dumb chips themselves. And they basically took a crypto mining chip and made it as high end as they could with the DUV technology and then stacked it on top of itself to put it into the phone. It was a very brute force way of doing things, very, very power intensive, took up a lot of space in the phone. And on a side by side comparison, it might do relatively, it might be a fairly fast chip, but only for a certain number of things and it burns through the battery at light speed. But it was a nationalist success because they were able to do that with the tools they had on hand at the time. I don't mean to say that they weren't clever in doing that, but it wasn't a fresh design. They didn't make it using their own technology. So you don't want to overextend the argument that they've broken free of sanctions. China's difficulties in advancing its technological sector, particularly in high-end semiconductors, not only highlight its economic and industrial challenges but also underscore broader strategic implications. These technological constraints directly impact China's geopolitical maneuvering and its efforts to assert dominance on the global stage. One critical arena where these aspirations clash with reality is the South China Sea. This strategically important region has become a flashpoint where China's technological ambitions intersect with its geopolitical strategies. As China strives to bolster its presence and assert its claims in this contested maritime area, it faces resistance from nations such as the Philippines. This dynamic illustrates the broader consequences of China's internal struggles on its external strategies, revealing how technological limitations can influence geopolitical conflicts and territorial disputes. For years, China has steadily encroached upon Philippine territory in the South China Sea with little resistance, leveraging its formidable economic and military power, particularly its expansive navy, China has dominated the region. The Philippines, on the other hand, has had to navigate this power imbalance with extraordinary caution. However, recent developments have shown a dramatic shift in this dynamic, 
as the Philippines has begun to display remarkable bravery against China's aggression. This evolving situation can be likened to the classic tale of David versus Goliath, where the seemingly weaker player finds the courage to challenge a giant. The crux of the conflict lies in the South China Sea, a critical and resource-rich waterway covering approximately 1.4 million square miles. China's claims of indisputable sovereignty over nearly the entire South China Sea have put it at odds with several neighboring countries, including Brunei, Malaysia, Vietnam, Taiwan, and the Philippines. These claims are not just about territorial control, but also concern access to substantial undersea resources, such as 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas and 11 billion barrels of oil. In response to competing claims, China has aggressively militarized the South China Sea. It has built artificial islands equipped with missile systems, fighter jets, and jamming equipment, transforming the area into one of the world's most contentious regions. Despite this overwhelming military presence, the Philippines has emerged as one of the few nations willing to confront China's territorial ambitions openly. The Second Thomas Shoal and Scarborough Shoal are two major flashpoints in this ongoing standoff. The Second Thomas Shoal, or Ayungan Shoal, is an 11 nautical mile long submerged reef in the Spratly Islands, less than 200 nautical miles west of the Philippines' Palawan province. The Philippines is the only country maintaining a military presence here, with a small contingent of Navy Marines stationed on the Sierra Madre, a World War II-era tank landing ship intentionally grounded in 1999. This ship has become a makeshift military base, symbolizing Philippine sovereignty and preventing China from blockading the area. The Scarborough Shoal, a 58-square-mile atoll, is another critical point of contention. Traditionally a fishing ground for Filipinos, the shoal's strategic location makes it valuable for controlling maritime traffic in the South China Sea. China has made several attempts to block access to this shoal, and has even installed floating barriers to prevent Filipino fishermen from operating there. The Philippines has resisted these attempts, maintaining a presence around the shoal despite China's aggressive maneuvers. Recent events have intensified the conflict. In August 2023, Chinese Coast Guard ships fired water cannons at Philippine Coast Guard vessels escorting supply ships to the Second Thomas Shoal. The hostility continued with dangerous maneuvers and ramming incidents, including a significant confrontation in June 2024, where a Chinese vessel deliberately rammed a Philippine supply ship. This incident marked a peak in the tensions, with reports of injuries to Filipino personnel and vandalism of equipment. The Philippines has responded to these provocations with a mix of resilience and diplomatic efforts. Despite the escalating aggression, the Philippine government has avoided falling into China's trap of escalating conflict and has instead employed strategies such as inviting journalists to document the incidents to garner international support. A significant shift in the Philippines' stance occurred with the election of President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. in 2022. Marcos has adopted a more assertive foreign policy compared to his predecessor, Rodrigo Duterte, who was criticized for his perceived submissiveness to China. Under Marcos, the Philippines has openly challenged China's actions and increased its defense budget significantly. The 2024 national budget included a $4 billion defense allocation, a 40% increase from the previous year. Additionally, a $35 billion military modernization plan was approved, aiming to enhance the capabilities of the Philippine Navy, Air Force, and Army. Key upgrades include the acquisition of M142 HIMARS rocket systems, BrahMos supersonic cruise missiles, and improved naval and air defense systems. While the Philippines' military upgrades may seem modest compared to China's massive arsenal, they serve as a powerful deterrent and demonstrate a significant shift in regional power dynamics. The BrahMos missiles, for example, provide a robust defensive capability, ensuring that any aggressive actions by China would come with increased risks. This strategic posture is intended to bolster the Philippines' position in the South China Sea and to send a message to both China and potential global allies. The emphasis on a modernized military and defensive capabilities highlights the Philippines' determination to protect its sovereignty and maritime rights 
despite the overwhelming odds. The South China Sea dispute remains one of the most complex and volatile geopolitical issues of our time. The Philippines, once seen as a passive player in this conflict, has begun to assert itself with newfound vigor. This shift is driven by a combination of diplomatic resilience, strategic military upgrades, and a more assertive national leadership under President Marcos. The evolving situation underscores a broader pattern of resistance against China's regional ambitions and highlights the dynamic nature of international relations in contested maritime areas. In recent years, the South China Sea has become a battleground of geopolitical tension, where the Philippines has shown remarkable bravery against China's aggressive territorial claims. As we've explored today, the Philippines' steadfast resolve to defend its sovereignty, coupled with its significant military investments, is reshaping the dynamics in this contested region. To stay updated on the latest developments in international relations and military strategy, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications. If you found this analysis insightful, give us a thumbs up and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your engagement helps us continue delivering in-depth content that matters to you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.